My name is Hamish MacDonald and I will be chairing this evening's debate. Um, I'm going to introduce the panel, some of whom will be very well known to you, possibly all of them will be very well known to you. Um, first here, on my left, we have Helen McDade, who has lived and worked in Highland Perthshire for 10 years. She is Director of Policy at the John Muir Trust in Lockery. Next to Helen is Murdo Fraser, who has been uh, MS and MSP for Middle of Miss Scotland and Fife since 2001. Next to Murdo, we have Leslie Riddick, who is a journalist, author, and broadcaster. To Leslie's left, we have John Swinney, who is, of course, Scotland's Finance Secretary and one-time leader of the, of the SNP. The, 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 the nationalist proposition in the referendum is about saying, well, we're happy about sharing sovereignty at an EU level, we're happy about sharing sovereignty at a uh, NATO level, we're happy about sharing sovereignty at the UN level. The only people they don't want to share with are the people with whom we have most in common, who are the people of England, Wales and Northern Ireland, who we have 300 years of history and shared together, endeavour. And to me that doesn't make any sense at all. Here's the big thing for me. The Scots have been voting Labour, God love us, since 1921, by and large, with the exception of national governments and three Tory governments in the 1950s. Now, not everybody's voted Labour, quite evidently, but as a group, we have tended to keep saying something with the way we vote. And it's kept tending to be different from the way the rest of the UK votes. That's not just since Thatcher, that predates it. And what, what is trying to get out of the bag here? What kind of embryonic society is there that keeps having this thrown way of voting differently than everyone else? And I think it's a society that wants to be a social democracy. By and large. The Scottish Government has had a lot of control of a number of areas for some time now, education, the police, um, the social services, etc. And many people are planning, many people are very concerned about some of the things that have happened in them. I was asked yesterday for the first time ever to pay for a core book for my child at school. I don't think that's right. And at the same time we're told how wonderful things are going and yet our, our experience on the ground is not that. And so I think you're quite right, Leslie. It's not about the cultural identity. We're not less Scottish if we don't suddenly go out and vote for that kind of government. And I do come back to supposing all the rural areas consistently vote differently. Suppose we had independence, we had Scotland, and the rural areas continuously vote in di for a different thing. Shetland and uh, Orkney have voted Liberal for however long. So, you know, do they get their own <coughs> Liberal um, independent state? not who we are and what we are, but about how we can actually shape our services. I mean, Helen, you said, you know, how you would want to shape it for the local area. I think that's the whole point of it all. It's about decision making and what we can do, where we can do it, and how we can shape what suits um, the local communities, the wider communities of Scotland, and take decision making to the best level we can. Thank you. Now, Helen's point, just a moment ago, about, and it's linked to, to, to Helen Taylor's point, about having to pay for a school book for a child in school. Why is that happening? That is happening because the public finances are under such strain. Why are they under such strain? Because there are significant reductions in public expenditure being applied by the United Kingdom government that I have to live within as finance minister in Scotland. If we want to take a different direction on public expenditure, which we should be entitled to do if we want to, we have to have the financial controls to enable us to do that. And that's what's offered by a yes vote in the referendum. Thank you. Thank you.